This is the Right to Survive podcast, your topographical map to the ever-changing literary landscape. Your hosts, Celia, Dan, and Bridget are all struggling authors, learning, writing, and most importantly, surviving in a world where a book deal may actually now be considered a cryptid. Stay tuned for news, interviews, and discussion on every facet of our and your writing life. everybody, welcome back to the podcast. This is Dan. Uh, I am flying solo this week, just by the nature of the way things worked out with scheduling. Um, and I'm not doing much, just holding down the fort. Introducing our interview this week. Uh, it's a bit much, I think, for a drabble. Um, which you'll find why I believe that as you listen to it. Um, it's with uh, Mary Miriam and Carolyn Bull, both of Lavender Review. Mary Miriam is seems like kind of a, a godmother of lesbian poetry. She's cultivated what she calls her garden of lesbian poets in her time at Lavender Review, which turned into Headmistress Press. Uh, but she's been writing since the 60s, um, and her writing has appeared in 16 anthologies. It's appeared in Sinister Wisdom, as uh, including the issue that... Tara Shea Burke, our previous guest, edited the Evansville Review. Uh, she's had essays and stuff appear in Ms. Magazine and the New York Times. Uh, really, in more places uh, has her poetry appeared than I have time to cover. Uh, her BA is from Bennington College, and she has an MFA from Columbia that she got in the 80s, and that you, she has some really interesting stories uh, about how things have changed for poets, and particularly lesbian poets since then, but also how things might not have changed as much as we would like. She has a poem, The Earth, which was nominated by SWWIM for a Pushcart Prize, and she's released five poetry collections of her own, and a sixth, My Girl's Green Jacket, is due out this fall from Sally Jane Books, an imprint of Headmistress Press, and she has some interesting tidbits about the cover for that and sort of the reason and theme of that collection. She also had a children's book come out in March, Nuts in Nutland, with artist Hannah Barrett, that uh, is explicitly an LGBT book and grew out of a poetry challenge. So, you know, when you do those little challenges and those little uh, prompts, you never know what might come out of it. Now, her second guest is Carolyn Bull. She's a writer from Montreal, Canada. She's our first international guest, and yes, this is our first episode with a dual interview. Her poems have appeared in the Gay and Lesbian Review and Lavender Review, and she was, worked there as the guest art editor for the Dance Issue, and also has had her collage work published as well. Her short story, Do Know the Way, appeared in the LGBTQ issue of Mayday Magazine, and her book, Social Dance, a book of bellroom poetry, is out from Sally Jane Books. Uh, that same imprint as uh, Nuts and Nutland. The recipient of the Canada Council and Quebec Choreography grants for early works that often explored the intermingling of dance, words, and projected images. Carolyn Bull has a BA in Western Civic Culture and an MA in Media Studies from the Research Creation Option at Concordia. She has attended writing retreats at the Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown and is a graduate of the Humber School for Writers Postgraduate mentorship program this is a great interview uh if you're interested at all in poetry the creation of poetry uh lesbian or no female or no these are great great resources uh mary's been doing it a very long time she has a lot of very strong opinions uh she's a lot of fun to listen to talk um and who knows her guests her cats might make a cameo i will see you on the other side Everybody, I'm here with our guest for this week, uh, Mary Miriam, founder of Lavender Review and a co-founder of Headmistress Press, and Carolyn Bull, who is a, has been a guest editor for Lavender Review uh, 
and uh, is expecting it has and has a poetry book coming out very soon. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello there. Thanks for having us, Dan. So uh, obviously, I want to talk about uh, the, the 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 lavender review and a little bit about headmistress, but I also want to talk about uh, your your poetry as well. Um, and so I'm curious what got the how did the two of you uh each of you get into writing uh particularly poetry carolyn you go oh. <laughs> okay um i mean i guess for me it really came out of an extension i i'm a my background's in dance um and so it really comes out of um the rhythms and um kind of the breath and um, even subject matter to some degree and forms um, from dance. And so it just seems sort of a natural extension for me. And I just just start to play with it. And I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Mary, Mary has been, um, you know, just like an amazing support of early attempts on my part. And, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> And um, yeah, so it's really kind of an extension of of that, and, and then just getting into words. I really love words, and so just getting deep into the meanings of words and sounds of words, and um, yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> say that's probably where my beginnings are. Yeah, Mary. And I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So I came, I came to poetry because I was a solitary child who used to make up songs to sing myself to sleep. I mean, starting when I was, you know, just starting to talk, I started to sing and make up songs and stuff. And then I started to oh. write them down. And then um, I was mostly into music when I was growing up. A lot of I used to play Bach all the time and Beethoven, and I was just a, a real pianist and singer also. And then um, um, when I was 13, I I got a poetry assignment from my teacher. She said, write a poem. And then she wrote on my paper, write more poems. So that's how I started. I mean, ever ever since then, I've been sort of focused in on poetry and sort of obsessed with it. And... um, (laughs) I also I like the portability and memorability of poems because and I, and I like also that I mean I love all the arts but poetry is the only one that I that I can do as kind of a solitary soul I don't need an orchestra or you know collaborators and since I've always had kind of a solitary existence poetry is has been my friend. What can I say? And that's true with the, form, the formal part of it too. The forms like sonnets and villanelles, sestinas. Not that I write a lot of villanelles and sestinas, but I mostly I I write a lot of uh, sonnets and well, how do they want to say it? I say gazzle, but they say you're supposed to say guzzle. But I, I'm not going to say guzzle. I, I'm going to call it gazzle. And, uh, <laughs> Anyhow. Well, and that's one thing I noticed um, looking at, at at both of your poetry. You're um, you're both sort of you're different sorts of poets um, from what I've seen, um, but but both of you, and I, you know, I, even you can argue with me about this because poets usually do when I try to put them in boxes. Um, you you both seem to have a, a, a an interest in in form in form of poetry. Um, Mm. Whether it's mm. for the sort of traditional, the um, some of the more traditional forms like the sonnet that you mentioned, uh, Mary, or the more concrete stuff that you do, Carolyn. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think that? Yeah, I, I would. I would say po- that form is definitely. I'm fascinated by form. I'm fascinated by forms that evolve, inevitably evolve out mm-hmm. of something that you're in. I often think of it like you kind of pose a question of some kind and then you just start to kind of follow the question and inevitably a form emerges and it's, it's, uh, and I, I, I do, I do. I find that very fascinating, the very notion of form and, 
and how it can um, amplify what you're experiencing and what the reader is experiencing as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, <laughs> to be honest, I, I actually, um, one of the reasons why I'm very interested in what Mary does is because it is something that I I, I don't have an experience with, but it, it just draws me right in, you know, and I, I can feel the strength of the form and, um, and I find that really um, inviting. Ooh, yeah. Thank you. Somebody asked, somebody asked a question on Facebook. What came first, music, dance, or poetry? Oh. I think oh. They're, all, they're all, you know, the form with the sonnet, it's kind of a dance. You know, their feet, you count the feet, and um, yep. Yep, it's very musical with five beats in a line and five feet. So that's part of why I love it, because I love all the arts. So, and I also like how it looks on the page. And also, I mean, yep. I mean, honestly, isn't it like almost impossible to, to write free verse and to make up, to create a new kind of form every time you write something in free verse? I mean, because... If a poem doesn't have any form at all, what is it? It's prose. It has to have some kind of form, even if it's called free verse. So it's you have to be, in my opinion, incredibly inventive to write interesting free verse. Well, and and and, and you you bring up invention, uh, Mary, and it's it's interesting. Uh, you're the you're the first person I've, I've ever spoken to, both for this podcast or in general, who's actually. Uh, created their own poetic form. Oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> like that. The uh, the the your your basic me on your website. I I found it really uh, a really fascinating idea. Um, yeah. Well, that, um, that was a cool. lot of fun to invent that. Yeah, that was because I joined this online uh, workshop called Eratosphere and. Suddenly, this was about in 2006, I think, all, all of a sudden had all these colleagues from all over the world who became, quickly became friends and um, were all interested in writing in form. And I was so excited about it that I just, I had to create a form <laughs> right away. <laughs> so a lot of people have written it. And, and it's amazing, and even published poems in Basic Me. So that was it was just incredibly exciting. Wow! Yeah, it's just a really neat I did, thing. I didn't, I didn't know that story. That's really neat. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I actually, Mary, I really, I did not actually know that you had all that background in music as well, and. And you know, of course, one of the things that I've uh, I've enjoyed um, with you is the whole cross art thing. And um, and yes, of course, it makes so much sense that music is so much of a, um, a, a seed in what you do. I just love that. Yeah, definitely. I used to <laughs> sing and sing in choirs and all the time, constantly singing and and girl scouts huh. and stuff. So. Yeah. In fact, as a matter of fact, I was a budding folk singer back in the 60s. <laughs> like Joan Baez, Judy Collins, and uh, Joni Mitchell were like my idols. I, I wanted to be them. But somehow, you know, you have to have an incredible amount of magnetism and performance skill or something. Or, you know, you just have to have that thing. Which I didn't have, so so I, I just it just makes it makes me think of you know poetry and music and coffee houses. I mean, it all kind of goes together, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. The m- music is it's 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 very interesting, but uh, that's that's an interesting thing, especially because yeah, there's a very performative quality to poetry. Um, well, I, I would say there's a performative quality if you're doing performance poetry. I mean, if you're doing, you know, what's it called? Um, when the, when spoken you word. Spoken word, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. to get up and perform it, that's performance.